What's up, everybody? This is Christian Brindle, and welcome to episode 94 of the Everything Medicare podcast. I hope you had a fantastic weekend, as today is Monday. And folks, I just wanted to take the time to say, I say it enough, I'm sure, but I always feel like I'm not. Um, And that is to just say thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being the reason why this show and this podcast is what it has become and what it continues to grow to be. And my vision for this podcast has always been that I wanted to reach as many people as possible and just take the complications out of Medicare. I mean, I've heard a lot of agents um, and people in the insurance industry over the years particularly mention things um, along the lines of, you know, a person on Medicare doesn't really need to understand Medicare, or they don't want to become an expert on Medicare, which I guess for some people may be true, and I'm sure that most people on Medicare don't want to become an expert on Medicare, but there's a difference between becoming an expert and understanding what your choices are, you know, and Whenever that argument for, you know, well, people on Medicare don't want to become an expert on Medicare, whenever that argument becomes a cop-out for people on Medicare not being able to understand what their choices are, that's where I draw the line and I'm not okay with it, okay? So I'm going to continue doing this podcast um, because I have a goal in mind. I want to reach millions of people across the country and be able to put the power into their hands, you know, to be able to put the decision-making ability into their hands and your hands and every single person that's listening because that's when you're going to make the smart decisions. And what the agents don't understand is that makes an agent's life easier too. It does. Whoever your agent is that you're working with, if you already are knowledgeable um, and are able to comprehend what your choices are ahead of time, it's going to mean that the agent doesn't have to explain as much. It means the agent, it's always easier for an agent to, to do business with somebody that knows more rather than less. You know, so I don't know why the agents don't understand that, a lot of them, but whatever, they don't. Um, if this is your first time listening, this is the Everything Medicare podcast. My name is Christian Brindle, where every single week I bring you three podcast episodes where we discuss your Medicare, your Medicaid, your Social Security, and everything that has to do with that golden age called retirement. And today, I want to discuss a topic that was brought up on a podcast episode I did over the weekend. Um, well, at, technically, I did the interview last week, but the, but the episode aired over the weekend on Saturday. I did an interview um, with someone that, and I thought it was a great interview and a great conversation. If you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it. But there was one topic that I wanted to share my perspective on and give my opinion on, because I don't know if I've ever really talked about it in too much detail on the podcast. Um, And that is HMO plans versus PPO plans. Okay, so whenever I have a guest on, I'm not bringing them on to argue with them or make them uncomfortable, or press them, or anything like that. I don't want to do that, or put them on the spot. I bring a guest on because I want to take somebody who has a lot of experience in the industry, who's been very successful in the industry, because in my opinion, I think if someone in this industry has been very successful, it means that they've successfully helped a lot of people. You know, in this industry, especially today with the internet, you really can't be a success in the insurance industry unless you've helped a lot of people with insurance successfully. You're not going to have um, a lot of people that are being very successful that are just, you know, scamming people and screwing people. I mean, you just don't see it, you know, because people know better. People don't stick with people that they that they find out aren't don't have their best interest in mind, and people can tell. Um, so I I I want to have somebody on every time I do this that has a different perspective than mine. That's the purpose of the interviews. It's so that you can get a break from me, for the most part. It's so that you can hear a perspective from somebody that might be different than mine. Now, a lot of things that I have people come on and talk about, I agree with wholeheartedly. Um, but there's every now and then there's something I don't agree with. You know, And just because I let them come on the podcast and talk about it to you, it doesn't necessarily mean I agree with their perspective, but I think you deserve the right as my audience, to be able to hear 
multiple perspectives because I have my perspective on certain things. I'm sure you have your perspective on certain things, and they're not always going to align side by side. So, the topic I want to talk about, and I'm not going to go into too much detail in the interview last last weekend, but it's it's HMO plans versus PPO plans, and basically, um, the interview I did with some questions I asked kind of led in, bled into a topic about HMO plans and why they're so bad for people and why people should consider PPO plans. And I don't think that's necessarily the case at all. And I'll tell you why. This is my perspective on this, folks. I think HMO plans and PPO plans both have their positives and negatives, but there are things, and, I've, and I'm licensed in multiple states. I lived in Utah forever. I lived in Florida temporarily. And so those are com- two completely different markets. Um, HMO plans here in Utah, for example, and HMO plans in Florida, for another example, are two completely different things on how they operate. They have some things in common, some characteristics that kind of you know make all HMO plans similar, but they're there's a lot of key differences that vary based on your market that you need to know about. I mean, I what have I said from the beginning? What have I freaking said from the beginning of the podcast? Ever since we started doing this, Medicare is not a one-size-fits-all. I'm going to be like a broken record on this. Medicare is not a one-size-fits-all type of situation. Everybody's different. Everybody has different needs and preferences. And a PPO has good and bad to it, just like an HMO. For those of you who don't know what an HMO and PPO are, are what a PPO are, I'm still waking up. Um, it's very simple. There are two different types of health insurance plans that, that, that determine networks and how how easily someone can go out of a network. In in the Medicare world, we're primarily pretty much talking about Medicare Advantage plans, okay? Most Medicare Advantage plans are going to be either an HMO or a PPO, and you have some things that fall into the middle, like a, a POS, which stands for point of service and things like that. I'm mainly going to be talking about HMOs and PPOs because I'd say probably 80% or more of Medicare Advantage plans out there are either HMO plans or PPO plans, okay? So... Let's start with an HMO and dissect it, okay? Let's dissect what an HMO plan is. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I, I haven't been around long enough to know what the HMO plans looked like in the 80s, you know, um, or the early 90s. I mean, I know a little bit about that stuff because my dad was around there, and I learned from my dad, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a historian when it comes to insurance, you know, if you've ever read my Medigap book, I go deep into the history of Medicare supplements, and I'm able to do that because I, 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 I link arms with a lot of people that have been doing this, doing this business a lot longer than me, and have been in this industry a lot longer than I have, such as my father, 30-year veteran, very, very successful, early pioneer um, in Utah. You know, there's FMOs I work with that you know, I'm able to get knowledge from. There's there's people that I follow, that I listen to what they have to say. Um, and I just I just have a lot of great connections with people that are smarter than me, that have been doing this longer than me, that I lean on for things like this. But let's talk about an HMO, first, things in for, first and foremost. What is an HMO? Let's dissect it. Well, HMO stands for Health Maintenance Organization, okay? Health maintenance organization is an HMO. So typically, an HMO works something like this. This is how I like to describe it to my clients. An HMO goes something like this. An HMO says, here's your network, okay? Because remember, close to all Medicare Advantage plans have networks. There's exceptions with some different kinds of hybrid plans, plans such as you know a lot of medical savings account plans and things like that. But we're just going to be talking about a regular HMO or PPO Medicare Advantage plan, okay? So an HMO says, all right, um, let's say I'm on Medicare, okay? All right, Mr. Brindle, here is your network. You get the best deal going in network. Well, actually with an HMO, you really can't get coverage out of the network is really what they say. Here's your network. You have to stay in your network. You can't go out of your network for any reason if you do We're not going to pay. Now, the exceptions to that with a Medicare Advantage plan is you can go out of network for an emergency room, 
anywhere in the world, and it'll be covered as if you're in-network, okay? And you can also, with a lot of HMOs, this isn't the case with all HMOs, but with a lot of HMOs, um, you're, they will allow you to go out of network for an urgent care facility or an Instacare. Okay, so emergency room or urgent care Instacare. But the urgent care Instacare thing is not with every HMO. You have to make sure that your plan allows that. Don't just take my word for it because a lot of HMOs plans allow it, but not all of them. Okay, so you have to make sure yours does. But those are two things that are common, but the emergency room is, to, is with all of them. Okay, that's something that's a, a Medicare requirement. Now, it's not uncommon for an HMO plan to have something that's called a gatekeeper doctor, meaning that they have you select a primary care physician. That primary care physician is responsible for um, allowing you to go to specialists. Typically, with a gatekeeper doctor, you can't see a specialist unless you get a referral from that particular doctor. Okay, and that's a pain for a lot of people. But one thing I wanted to point out in the conversation that I had over the weekend, well, in the, in the episode that aired over the weekend, excuse me, <coughs> it the argument that was made was almost make it sound like every single HMO makes you do that, and that's baloney. Okay, I'll use my home market here in Utah for example. There's more HMOs here that don't make you get a referral to see a specialist than there are that that require it. Not all HMOs are going to require you to get a referral. A lot of them are in a lot of places. So like here in Utah, that's an example. In Florida, most HMOs are going to require that, but still not all. There's exceptions to everything. But that's not a blind, that's not a blanket statement. That's not a blanket fact to talk about HMO plans. Not all HMO plans are going to make you get a referral. Okay? And not even all HMO plans are going to require you to have a, a specific primary care doctor assigned to your account. Most of them will. But the ones that don't make you get a referral doesn't mean you necessarily have to go to that doctor. You can pretty much go anywhere you want in the network as long as they're in the network. That's the thing. So it's not a blanket statement. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients on HMO plans in my state here in Utah, for example, with various different insurance companies, and they have HMO plans that don't make you get a referral to see a specialist. It's not the case everywhere. Okay? There's 50 states. There's a lot of different markets. Every market's not going to be the same. I just think throwing out blanket statements like that is kind of dangerous, and I wanted to address it and give you my perspective on it because, like I said, I want people to be able to come on and share their, their opinion, their perspective, and that's fine. I'm cool with that. That's why I don't jump in. That's why I let them talk. That's why I don't interrupt them. That's why I don't get confrontational. I don't want to be rude to a guest. They're doing me a favor. Well, I'm doing them a favor as well. We're kind of doing each other favors, you know, because um, they're being able to come on my podcast, get some exposure, because this is a big audience we got. But they're doing me a favor too, because they're helping me provide interesting content from a, from their perspective, which is different than my own, which is something that I wouldn't be able to do without them because I have my own perspective and I have my own style and I'm my own person. So having someone different come on, come on, coming on gives you kind of a break from me and gives you something new, something different from the audience. So I'm helping them, they're helping me, but I'm not bringing them on here to start an argument or debate with them. They're entitled to their opinion. It's perfectly fine, but I'm entitled to mine as well. And it's something that I wanted to talk about. Um, stick with me into segment two. We'll talk about more about HMOs and PPO plans. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everybody. This is segment two of this week's Everything Medicare podcast. And today we're talking about HMO plans and PPO plans, particularly in the world of Medicare Advantage. Okay, so um, in segment one, I kind of talked about HMO plans. Okay, it's a stereotype that every single HMO plan requires you to get a referral from your primary care physician to see a specialist. It's, it's, it's fiction. 
that that's the case with every single HMO plans. Do a lot of HMO plans require that? Yes. Do certain markets, pretty much 90 plus percent of all HMO plans require that? Yes, there are certain markets like that. Florida is one of them. Um, but in a lot of markets I work in, it, it's not very common, you know? But it's not something that all HMO plans requ um, require or demand of you. It just depends on your market, okay? So don't let blanket statements like that scare you, all right? The other thing is, let's say, God forbid, you have an HMO plan that does require you to get a referral from your primary care physician. Some people want that. Some people want that. I know I have plenty of clients that I work with that even that have plans that don't require them to get a referral from their primary care physician, right? They'll have a PPO plan because it's better for them. They'll have a Medicare supplement because it's better for them. Plans that they don't need to do these things on as far as the referrals are concerned, but they'll go to their primary care physician anyway and ask them where they think they should go. I mean, there's people like that. There's plenty of people like that. So just even if your plan, let's say, does require you to get a referral from your primary care physician, if you don't have a problem with it, it's not a big deal. A lot of it depends. I, I always like to look at it like it has more to do with your primary care physician than it does the plan. If you have a great relationship with your primary care physician, if you like your primary care physician, if you trust your primary care physician, if they, if they can process referrals in a timely manner and you prefer it that way, then there's nothing wrong with that. Now, if you don't like your primary care physician, why do you have that primary care physician? But if you don't have a good relationship with them, let's say you don't trust them or they take you slow with things, that's where the, the referral system is flawed. It has more to do with the, whether the fact you have a good or bad primary care physician than the plan itself. Okay, and that's what it comes down to. Now, let's talk about PPOs because PPOs aren't perfect. PPOs have problems too. Okay. Okay, so this has been my experience with PPOs. Now, this is not a blanket statement either. So this is not going to be the case everywhere. So just take it with a grain of salt, but look for it when you're comparing a PPO plan with an HMO plan. From my experience, PPO plans, a lot of times, especially in some of the bigger markets, like Florida is a good example of this. There's a lot of PPO plans out there to where the copays and the max out of pockets on the Medicare Advantage plans are tremendously higher, tremendously higher. Um, you might be looking at a double the max out of pocket than you can get with an HMO plan, for an example. So there's that in a lot of areas. Um, not the case with all areas. Again, I work with in markets where that's not the case with the PPO, but it is in a lot of areas as well. And it's a it's a very common thing you'll run into. So you'll see a lot of PPO plans that have higher copays, higher max out of pockets. Like I said, not always and not everywhere, but it's something to look for. And from my experience, normally, HMO plans will have more of um, ancillary benefits than a PPO plan will. A lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times. You know, you'll see HMOs, especially in some of the bigger markets, um, will have more dental, vision, hearing, just extra benefits, and, and a, more, a, a wider diversity of things they'll cover. You know, and that, that's definitely the case in some of the bigger markets. Now, not everywhere. I, I have a lot of clients on PPO plans that have rich, rich, rich ancillary benefits with various different insurance companies. It's not the case everywhere, but in a lot of the bigger markets, um, I'll use Florida for an example, that's very common. You know, and I work with, I have a lot of clients in Florida. I work with a lot of people in Florida. And so more often than not, if I'm working with someone in Florida, a lot of times we'll probably be recommending an HMO to avoid the higher copays and the higher out-of-pockets because it's a very common thing to run into, depending on the area, of course. Florida is like three or four states in one, but you get my point, okay? Um, with a PPO plan, let's kind of talk about how they work. A PPO plan stands for a preferred provider organization. Preferred provider organization. So a PPO gives you the, the availability to go in and out of network, unlike an HMO. So that, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a plus sign. But it's really not that big of a deal if your HMO has a humongous network, and a lot of and some of them do. If your HMO has a tiny network, then the networks are a problem. I talked about this, Tom, blue in the face so many times on this podcast before, but I wanted to address this and kind of give you my opinion on it and my perspective. Okay, um, But a PPO will let you go out of network. Typically, with a lot of PPOs, you, they, they kind of work like this. They say, all right, Mr. Brindle. Here's your here's your plan. Here's your network. You get the best deal going in network. If you go out of network, we'll still pay just not as much. So you typically pay a higher cost out of network, and it's gonna it could be a higher copay, it could be a percentage, um, 
of the bill, it kind of just depends on your plan, but you always pay more going out of network than you do going in network. Granted, with an HMO, you're not really allowed to go out of network at all. Now, so, But there's a lot of HMO plans that have travel programs in it too, so it's not a blanket statement. Plans are going to, the point of this, I'm not trying to bash one or the other, promote one or the other, but the point of this episode and the point of this podcast and the point of my ranting is this. HMO plans and PPO plans are not the same down to the wire in every market. Some markets, the HMO plans are going to be much superior for various reasons. In some markets, the PPO plans are going to be superior for various reasons. It depends on where you live because there's 50 states, a lot of markets within these 50 states. And I know all 50 of them listen to this podcast. So this is vital that you know this. Um, in one area, an HMO might, might not be a great product for someone to pick up because of what's available, and a PPO might be a stronger product, but to say that someone should consider a PPO, even though the PPO plans in their area might be trash in comparison to the HMOs, is, is, is ludicrous to me, and, and I wanted to give my opinion on it, okay? It's crazy. Forget about stereotypes. Forget about blanket statements. Look at the available plans in your state. Take all of the available information into consideration. Look at the plans. Don't have any preconceived notions and pick the best plan for you. Because in some areas, the HMOs are a no-brainer. But in other areas, the PPOs are a no-brainer. Okay? But things like referrals don't exist everywhere with HMOs and with all plans. It's bullshit. Sorry. And PPO plans are not always better programs. Sometimes the benefits are worse than the HMOs. It just depends on the market. They both have their good and their bad, but you have to look at the available plans in your market before you can make a decision. So keep this in mind. I urge you to keep this in mind, and I hope you got my point. I'm not trying to bash anybody. I'm not trying to attack anybody. I'm just giving my perspective on this because I think blanket statements are dangerous because Medicare is not a one-size-fits-all thing, especially when in every state the plans are freaking different. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back in segment three. Welcome back, everybody. Segment three, our third and final segment of this week's, well, this Monday's Everything Medicare podcast. And please don't misinterpret my message. Like I said in the last segment, I'm really not trying to attack anybody or bash anybody. I just don't like blanket statements. I think they're dangerous, and I wanted to address it. Okay? I encourage you, look at the plans available in your market. Look at how the HMOs work if you're picking a Medicare Advantage plan and look at the PPOs and how they work in your market. See which one's better. It's easy to look for. Okay? Compare the benefits. Compare if you need a referral or if you don't need a referral if you want. If you want a plan that doesn't need a referral, make sure you're looking at that, but don't just go in, you know, with the expectation that all HMOs require referrals cuz they don't. A lot of in a lot of places they do and a lot of plans they do, but there's plenty that don't require it. Like I said, I have hundreds upon hundreds of clients that have HMO plans with me that don't require a referral. They exist. I guarantee it. Promise. Um, and I have hundreds and hundreds of clients with me that have PPO plans that are fantastic. You know, it just depends on the area. One is not better than the other at all times. It just depends on your situation, your market, what's available. I encourage you, okay? My opinion my perspective, you can listen to me or you can take it with a grain of salt, okay? But I just wanted to share my opinion on it. Uh, I, don't, I don't disparage anybody for having any certain opinion. I'm not attacking anybody. I'm not trying to start an argument with anybody, okay? But I wanted to share my opinion. I've never been, a, I've never been afraid to share my opinion on this podcast. Never. Never, ever, never, okay? 
Folks, um, as we approach the enrollment period, we're going to have more and more um, AEP, which stands for the um, Annual Election Period centric videos and the annual election period basically is October 15th through December 7th it's when people on Medicare can make changes to their plan you can change a Medicare Advantage plan to another Medicare Advantage plan you can change from a Medicare Advantage plan and go back to original Medicare with a Part D plan and a Medicare supplement if you want if you can pass the health questions on the Medicare supplement that is or you can go from a Medicare supplement with a Part D plan to Medicare Advantage it's kind of like a free-for-all you can kinda of just do what you want to do that goes from October 15th through December 7th it's coming up it's just around the corner um, the Advantage plans and the Part D plans announce their changes for 2020, October 1st. They become public, to the public. And I'm going to be doing more and more um, AEP-centric videos as we go in to the enrollment period, okay? So watch for that. Also, this podcast is now on video and gets posted on YouTube. So if you would like to see or watch this on video and watch me while I do it, um, the videos will be on YouTube each and every episode we do, just search for Christian Brindle or search for the Everything Medicare podcast. Um, my channel has emoji cartoon face of me. It's what I looked like when I started um, years ago. And um, subscribe to my channel because it helps us reach more people. We're trying to to expand and get this pl- podcast on as many platforms as possible. A- and we have one more week left for my deal for Stitcher. Um, if we get 10 five-star reviews on Stitcher, we, it was a two-week deal. So last Monday to two weeks from last Monday, which would be a week from today, next Monday. Um, and that would be... The 9th. The 9th. So until the 9th, we have until to get 10-star reviews on Stitcher. If we get it... I will do a special episode and a podcast and, and disclose what an agent makes on on different Medicare products as far as a commission is concerned. I'm not doing that to discourage you from working with an agent, but some agents only make recommendations based on their own commission. I don't give a rat's you know what. I don't care. As long as you're happy. As long as you're happy, I could care less. I, rec- I make recommendations constantly that pay me less than if I made another recommendation. But my dad always taught me when I was coming up in the business, when I was really young, that we'd rather have one happy client or customer than 50 unhappy ones. So we always make recommendations that we feel is best for that person. Commission doesn't even enter our minds. But for a lot of agents and brokers, that's the only thing that enters their mind. They're thinking about them, not necessarily you. So I'm willing to kind of um, take the sheet, pull the sheet off, and disclose it. Because it's pretty much the same for every agent and broker. However, you know, different agents or brokers might have better contracts. We'll talk about that in the episode if I do it. But I'm not doing it unless I get 10 five-star reviews on the platform called Stitcher. We need to move up that rank. It's a big platform. So help us do that. Talk with you soon.